Hey folks, Mal the Train Shooter back in the studio and back with a little bit of a one-off build for you. Uh, if you've seen the thumbnail to this video, some of you will be thinking, ooh, he's doing plaguey stuff. Some of you will be going, I know what computer game he plays. Yeah, but what we're doing is we're mething with skulls. This is poor Yorick. Alas, I knew him so well. Okay, I've got a skull here. There's a, a particular... There's an, a particular sort of demon altar from a game I play a lot of called Valheim. Yeah, I, I, I love the game. But it's really iconic. And from the moment I sort of saw it, it was like, I want to build that. Now, I have a skull here. This is one of those Christmas skulls, cheap and plastic. Whoa! Yeah, but it'll work perfect. Now, the basic idea of the altar is it's an, a skull with an open mouth, with this being a summoning pool. Yeah, which is pretty easy with this sort of thing. Thing is, I've got to do some converting on this first and some filling as well. So what have we got? First off, the altar itself uses sort of a tip top head. Okay, now I've got a mold line here, which happens to be perfect. Yeah, at the right sort of angle. So instead of getting rid of that mold line, I'm going to sort of file cuts, saw, probably get it on the belt sander to be truthful. Yeah, and take this skull down so it can sit flat like that. The other thing that I'm going to do is I need to reduce this jaw a little bit. And also, because it's going to be sort of head up and you can see inside the mouth, I need to reduce this bit and sort of make the teeth in. It's a little bit challenging, but it'll make a lot more sense once I've done some sanding and that sort of stuff and some cutting. So what I'm going to do is, it's cracking on time. I'll see you shortly. So I've been cracking on and I've been grinding and obviously there's a bit of a difference. Now, here I've got Yorick's brother, Bob, just to show you the difference. Yeah, you can clearly see where I've sort of taken the back end off of this and completely changed the aspect from that sort of skull to that sort of skull. And at the same time, if I bring the jaw up, yeah, you can see I've sort of really hammered that. Now, one of the things I've done is, you can see, I've taken the bulk down off there, I've broken these off and I've sanded them down, yeah, to give me a much more lower profile bottom jaw. Yeah, now, of course, though, cut myself out a little bit of 3mm MDF, gave it a bevel, and as you can see, the skull fits perfectly. Now, this is going to go here, but there's a couple of things we've got to do. If I bring it up, you can see that we've got quite a, a large hole there. Yeah, we're gonna to have to fill that. We've also got where I filed down the large protrusions of the mandible. I did used to be a physio. Here's me getting all that anatomical. So, taking down the watch clip, the attachment points of the ma mandible, and I've got to re-sculpt those in. Now, a battle plan with those is milliput. Yeah, and I can sculpt those in roughly with mini put. All I've got to do is make sure they, they sort of disappear and hide. Now, the other thing is, as you can see, I've, I've got my Dremel and I've cleaned out all of that. But I need to fill the void. Same with there. And the idea is to fill these voids, I'm going to use a little bit of what you call it, spare polystyrene, XPS. Yeah, that should fill it so far. And what I don't fill with the polystyrene, I can fill with Daz. Now, this is going to be aided through the means of hot glue, PVA. And basically, I'm going to wing it. That's what we're going to do. But first, we need to sort of get an idea of what sort of shape. Now, as you can see, I need to fill that void. So there's an easy way of me getting a rough shape for this. I'm going to get my polystyrene. Bring this down. Push that in. And there's my, the rough shape for my void. If I get my, my watch clip, my mandible, my lower jaw, come over here. And just very quickly run a pen round. Yeah. 
There we go, there's my two marks. Now my next job is to cut all these out. Yeah, sort of wedge them in place in here and then watch it start packing them. So I'll bring you back once I've got made some progress guys. See you shortly. I brought you a bit closer so you can get a bit more intimate with the Oric. Right, okay, let me show you what I've been doing. Right, I'm halfway through the sort of fixing and as you can see, yeah, I've got a nice bit of XPS there. You know, it's got sort of like a, a slight bevel to it. Yeah, basically, I want to cut it out. I hammered it with that. <laughs> yeah, just so it wasn't so flat. It's not perfect, but it's not so flat and I'll be able to blend it in. If I bring it round and show you the insides, yeah, you can see that basically what I've done is I've got my shape and I've then gone round and I've hot glued it. Yeah, now on top of the hot glue all around that piece, I've thrown some on the old anchor points for the jaw. Yeah, and there was a hole just here. Yeah, look. Yeah, I've got no idea what it's for, but it's filled now. So, on the other side, that's given me a nice sort of like dimple. Yeah, I can now put, when I when I sort of shape this and do my milliput work, I can put a little bit of milliput and just make these that disappear. But other than that, that's ready to glue down once we've just filled in there with our DAS. I just want this to dry properly before we do. Now, before we move on, yeah, I want to show you what I'm doing with the jaw. So, you saw me push the jaw down, yeah, cut it out, put it there. Now, you'll also see there's another edge there. And this is why I wanted to film this to show you what I've done. Basically, what I've done is I've come along with my skull after I've put my jaw down, got it to roughly where I wanted it, and press down, yeah, to get that imprint. The reason being is if I now get a blade, very carefully, I can put that in there, and that should fit pretty much perfect. How is it? Yeah. And then all I've got to do is just fill the gaps with some DAS. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to... So here's the question. I've got a DAS up there first. I've got a DAS in there. I'm going to hot glue, fix the polystyrene, do some work on this, and then DAS in. So I'll bring it back once I've got a little bit more progress for you guys. Feel like a bit of a dentist doing this sort of stuff. I'm working on an upper palate. So, got the milli, not the milli put, got the dads in. Yeah. Smoothed it in, pushed it in, used a wet finger just to get it nice, get a good shape to it. And then, as you can see, it's got that sort of texture to it. All that was a matter of just getting one of these and just, you know, playing with it. Yeah, coming from two different directions, just having a go at trying to replicate something a little bit organic i think that's done all right to be truthful right now obviously you've got this bit glued down we need to fix this on before we take it any further just very quickly you can see also see where i've dazzed up all my holes i think that one doesn't that one feels a little bit of a dip but we'll be fine i'll give it a little sign yeah and that one now next job we need to put it in here so we've got to hot glue it And all I'm going to do for this case is a little bit of hot glue here. Doesn't need to be a great bond because we can go around it with PVA. Yeah, we just need to get it fixed in place while we do the rest of our sculpting. Come on, come on, come on. That's enough. And just bring it in. Oh, almost. Oh, I wanted it just across a bit. You gonna fix? You gonna stick? I think it might. Right. What we'll do is put a couple of spots in because these will get disappeared. These will get blended over and that sort of stuff. Okay. Uh, we've got a decent attachment there. Yeah, we've got a decent attachment there. Right. Now the hot glue's gone in, all we need to do is come in at the bottom jaw. I've got to fill this in. 
yeah and then we're going to come back and we're just going to do some sort of like pool light sort of sculpts on it but first thing a little bit of water a little bit of daz yeah the water helps it bond yeah see daz with it being an air drying clay if you put it on a dry surface it's got nothing to grip to whereas if you use a little bit of water then it sort of softens and then sort of allows the, the clay to key into the materials and you get a much better bond. So there's my dad's. Yeah. And all I'm going to do is just start pushing it into the edges. Yeah. Start filling those gaps. This was supposed to be a side project. I spent all my time on it. It's how you know you're having fun, isn't it? When you get distracted doing good things. The main thing is I get back to watch clip finishing my display shelf. But right now, let's just get that cleaned up. Ah, yucky. And then, and then, right, I need to level that down a bit because that's a bit high there. We need to put a bit more on that side. Come on, clean that up. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Dip in some water so I get a decent bond and just push it in. Right, that's enough for you. Now, what I've got to do is just basically get a level surface or as level as I can for what I need to do. That's enough. Right. Get this clay shaper. Get water so it doesn't stick. Even though it's silicon. Let's just smooth that down a bit there. And that go away. And same on this side. Smooth. Right, the next thing I need to do is I need to put some texture on that. Yeah, and so what I want is, let's get, I want a nice round. Right, another clay shaper, but I'm just using this side of it this time. Now, it's supposed to be a pool effect. So I'm going to have to have a play with this, but luckily, because it's Daz, if I screw it up, I can just wet my finger and give it a little bit of a rub. Right, let's get some water on here first. Smooth that out a bit. No point trying to do ripples or anything like that. I'll struggle too much, so it's better off just getting some sort of organic looking effect. Organic looking effect. Basically, just drag your thing all over it, make a real mess of it, and it should come out all right. That's what I'm saying. That's what we're doing. What are you on about? It'll come out perfect. Right. Actually, it's coming out not to be too bad, to be truthful. He says, right, as you can see, all I'm doing is basically just getting this in and I'm just basically trying to get a bit of a texture for the pool. Yeah, breaking up this smooth surface. Do you know what? I'm Ooh, I'm starting to get to the polystyrene underneath, so that's a fair indicator that we've gone as far as we need to. Right, that's not bad. Have I got any skulls? Where are my skulls? Do I have any? That's quite a demonic skull, isn't it? Let's use that one. So, final skull. Just to make things interesting. Also, it gives me something to paint up. Right, so, I've got the skull on the tweezers. Ah! 
We want this one nice front and centre. Yeah, and then just push it down a little. There we go. And there we have it. We've got our little skulls in there as well. Uh, do we want to do the last bit of texturing before we cool, cool this bit? A bit of water. And I'm going to call it there. Right, lovely bit of texture, some skulls. All I need to do now is just bridge these gaps and give it a texture. So I'm going to grab, grab some Millie Put Out or some green stuff, see if I can rebuild this mandible a little bit. Be a bit interesting. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, and then after that, yeah, a little bit of texture. So see you shortly. So I've done my Aura Max Filler, Max Filler surgery. Max Filler. So I've done a bit of bone grafting and created a bit of a, a jawbone out of Millie put there. Yeah, it's not bad. Perhaps I should have become an orthopedic surgeon like my Uncle Guppy. The plan always was to be a doctor. Till I joined the army. Black sheep of the family. <laughs> anyway, yeah, as you can see, looking good. Yeah, uh, I could actually do with being better. Stop messing with it, Bose. It's okay. It's okay. Right, there are some points that need to be worked on. Yeah, but the plan is I'm going to let these dry and then we can dremel them out. Now, the other thing you'll notice is I've got a bit of a texture down on it now. Yeah, that is just... Yeah, shredded paper and sealing stucco mixed up with a little bit of water. And it gives a nice undulating texture. Now, one of the things I've got to do very quickly. Can't help mess. Can't help mess. He's messing again. That's what I do. Right, there we go. I'm not 100% happy with that jaw, to be truthful. I want to push it in a bit more. Right, I'll mess with that off camera. What I need to do is show you what I'm doing. Right, obviously I've put down the ceiling stew coat to get myself a bit of a texture, but it's gone on the skull. So, easy way of cleaning it up is one of the, with one of these sort of sponge brushes. Yeah, nice and easy way of cleaning these sort of things up. Right, so, we'll keep going. Now, with everything done on this, all that remains is for me to just leave it to dry and then we're going to come back and clean it up in the morrow. Yeah, or paint it up, shall we say. So, I'm going to just finish off cleaning off all of this with my little sponge. Yeah, we're going to make it, we'll get it looking really nice and clean. And then I'll bring it back when it's dried and we can start to paint it up. See you shortly, folks. And it's turned out great. Come on down. And here we are, Yorick. Does he look beautiful? Right, okay. We've done the texturing on the ground and I've got a lovely effect for a sort of like swampy, marshy sort of muddy ground look. I'm playing with it. Right, uh, you can see in there clearly, we've got our skulls in our sort of gloop. And then at the top, I've just done a bit of texturing with the Daz, that's turned out great. And the only thing that I really did off camera is obviously, there's a bit of a change to the eyes. The eyes, if I just grab your, if I grab Bob, your ex brother, yeah, you can see the eyes have got a gloss finish on them. And when it comes to painting that up, that's gonna end up, watch clip, 
we're not going to get a good effect out of that. So all I've done is I just stippled it with a little bit of watered down filler. Yeah, just to get a bit of texture in there. Yeah, something for the paint to key on. And then once it was dry, just sort of wiped and cleaned it up, leaving that result. Now, the next thing that we need to do to this is start painting it. And we're going to go with sort of like a stone effect, like it's a stone carved altar. Yeah, but I want it to have like a, a prut, not a putrid, uh, a sort of swampy, damp feel. So I've been playing around with colours. Okay, and obviously here we are. Not sure how good that's coming through, so I'll lift the plate up a little. Yeah, you can see I've got my standard dark grey there, and I've got a little bit of sap green. Yeah, can you see that? There you are. I've just been adding it in. Now I added just a little in, yeah, and just to take it off the standard grey and give it a little bit of damp feeling, mossy feeling. I started to layer it on there. You can sort of see what I'm going for. Now my next job is I need to mix up a bigger batch of this and then layer it on. But I'm not just going to mix it up and then layer it on. Yeah, what I'm going to do is mix it up with just a, a little bit of green in it first. Layer it all over the whole piece. Absolutely everything. Yeah, probably with the exception of the mouth. I have to think about that. And then what I'm going to do is when I come on to do my second layer, I'm going to mix up another little bit of grey, put a little bit more green into it and start layering it into the areas that would be damp and that sort of stuff as I go. So it's a two tone process. Yeah. First off, though, I've got to mix my paint. So I'll be back shortly. So the base coat is on, it's coming together, but I did have some challenges and I've had some thoughts. Anyway, come on down. Okay, right, here's our skull, looking great. Now, very first thing is the actual plastic of the skull was a nightmare to get a solid base coat on. It took about three coats, whereas the eye socket and the nose where I'd stippled my filler, that took a solid coat first time. Obviously because it's got a texture and also because the filler actually absorbs the pigment meaning you get a stronger base coat. Whereas on smooth plastic, yeah, it sort of gets smeared around and you have to build it up in layers. So one thing I have learned from this is next time I give this a go, yeah, I'm going to stipple the whole lot. Yeah, not just the eye sockets. Why don't you get a better texture as well? Now, as you can see, if you can just sort of see, it has got a gray on it, but it's a greeny gray. Yeah, it's worked just perfect, not too much not too little. The other thing that to know is, watch out, obviously I've got this brown on, it's drying at the minute. Yeah, this is a Brazilian brown from a brand called Valspar. Yeah, and it's a real muddy, sort of swampy brown color, which works really well in these situations. Yeah, so and the reason I'm using it out of a pot, it's quite simple. I don't want to mix up, unlike where the skull, I've, I've mixed up my sort of greeny gray. I'm actually thinking I might develop this into a set. I'm making no commitments, I'm just gonna roll with it. You know how it is. But I'm gonna see about making a few other things that follow in the theme, yeah? And for that, I, if I'm gonna expand on it and expand on it in the future perhaps, I want a solid manufacturer color, i.e. a color that I can go straight to a manufacturer and I can just buy off the shelf and I can make sure it's color matched. Yeah, now, moving on to other colors, we've obviously got the mouth portal and I want to give this mouth portal sort of a glow, a green glowing effect. Yeah, and to sort of achieve that, I've got all my sort of army painter paints here. Now, very quickly, there is a metric ton of greens, because you know it's army painter. There's a metric ton of every color. I'm not complaining, I find it quite useful. I just go through them like crazy because I use them for terrain, for the detailing stuff. So very quickly, yeah, I no normally use this sort of stuff in house paints. You know what I mean for doing my terrain, but when it comes to the detailing stuff, I use what you call it, molding acrylics. Now we've got a load of greens here. Yeah, most of these are the dark, either the dark ones or very uh, pastel ones, or they're a bit too drab. So I've sort of ruled out all those greens and we've pulled it to these. Now I'm pretty solid that I want to start off with this moldy clothes. It's a nice solid green. It's got a bit of vibrancy in, well, 
it's nice and bright, but it is a little bit drab, yeah? Or a little bit desaturated, should I say, which means, compared to these, which means it should give a good base coat. Then I'm in two minds, yeah? And I'm gonna sort of see how it goes, but we've got these sort of snake scales and jungle green, which are really, they're virtually the same to be truthful. It's just the jungle green is a little bit more vibrant. And then we've got these, which is Witch's Brew and Disgusting Slime. Yeah, going by the labels on these. Yeah, very similar situation to the other two. They're just more, don't know what's that got to mix with. A little bit of yellow, perhaps. Yeah, and then for the glowy effect, for the final peaks on my, whatever it is. Yeah, Poisonous Cloud. I mean, look at that for bright. Crawl <laughs> away. Right, so my next job is I'm going to watch clip. Basically, put mouldy clothes into the mouth of the skull, as you do, and then watch clip. Uh, we'll take pictures, and I'm just going to basically layer it. I'm going to overbrush it around here at the same time, so I get this sort of glow effect. Yeah, and then I'm just going to basically dry brush and, and layer it up with a couple of layers. Yeah, so we'll get that done at the same time. I've got to finish the skull. Now, for the skull, it's dead simple. I'm just going to brush on some bog standard grey, line it up a little, and then once it's that's done, and I've got a little bit of, it's not a, one single solid colour, and we've got a little bit of highlighting on it, yeah, I'm going to come in, and I'm going to start doing some mould effects on it, some moss and some mould effects on it. But we'll have a play with that once we've got that done, and once we've got the mouth done, yeah. I have to sort of do them in tandem, so because there's dry brushing on both sides, they, they have to blend in. So I'm going to do one layer, then one layer with the green, one layer with the grey, one layer with the green, one layer with the grey, and it'll sort of all blend in together, fingers crossed. I'm doing far too much of this. If anyone wants to jump on Amazon and get me that paint shaker the thing that's on my wish list, you'd be doing me a real solid. My arm hasn't ate this much since I was a teenager. Crack it on. Yorick's got glowy. Check it out. Oh, look at that. That's turned out lovely. Shadow's sure, not great. Yeah, but you can see the glow effect. Now, that was just a simple matter of working through. I went in the end with moldy clothes, snake scales, and then this really poisonous cloud, this really vibrant sort of sickly yellow. Yeah, and as you can see, yeah. It worked great. Now the other thing is obviously I've dry brushed it up then I've used a little bit of grey and just sort of thinned it down a bit and just gone round the edges and knocked it back a bit where my dry brushing was too harsh and it didn't look like a, a glow effect. It, it looked more like a paintbrush, paint stripe. Now uh, that's the mouth done and the glowy fit bits done. The skull's got a, a, a sort of drab greeny grey watch cover on but I want to swamp it up a little bit more. And for that, yeah, my plan is to use this stuff. Yeah, this is Vallejo Acrylics Environment, yeah, uh, slimy green dark. And basically, it's a drab green. Yeah, I've had it for a while. I've done some bits and bobs with it. It's kind of nice, and I want to have a play with it. So while I'm doing this, it seems the perfect opportunity. But I'm not going to be layering it on heavy. In fact, what I want to do is use it to create, to sort of create damp and mossy areas in crevices and around the bottom. And for that, we're gonna do wet blending. Now, if you don't know what wet blending is, it's where basically you get a model, yeah, and you take all this lovely water and you just brush it over it, yeah, and then you get your strong pigment color and you blend it in. Now, this isn't the, the exact way of doing it, because normally I'd use a watch, a, a brush to put it on, then a brush to blend it in, but I'm sort of winging it. Yeah. And that's basically the idea. And as you can see, it sort of drops in. And once it's in the water, you can use it just to get a tone on. Now, I am thinking I'm going to go in a little bit more heavier with this sort of stuff. Yeah. As we work our way around and in some of the crevices with maybe some more effects. But I want to get this on first. So.
Right, the Vallejo acrylic has gone down and it has come out and it's given it a lovely little green shades and that sort of stuff. I did splodge it on a bit too heavy in a few places. Yeah, and I got sort of a gloss effect. So I'm just dealing with that now. Now you can sort of see, yeah, right there, it's sort of a little greeny and wet and that sort of stuff. That's because I'm playing at the moment. What I've got here is I've got a bit of a mixture, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, right, what's in this mixture? It's a mixture of one part watch clip, sap green acrylic paint, one part dark grey paint, yeah, to make a drab effect, not that basically to darken this and make it a little bit more drabby. Then one part PVA, not PVA, uh watch clip, Mod Podge, which is PVA. Yeah, it's just got a gel agent in, but matte Mod Podge so I don't get a gloss effect. And then what I've done is I've just sprinkled, mixed it up, and I've sprinkled some just basic light scatters into it and the idea is that i'm trying to just build up some little moss effects and this is playing yeah which is why i've started it off camera and just get a feel for it before i sort of come on and i'm trying to work it out as we go yeah so dab it in a little bit of paint dab it in a little bit of what you call it and then just come along and just smear it sort of on see how it turns out Yeah, I am keeping it nice and thin. I might add more stuff to it, I'm not sure. I just want to break up the grey a little bit around these areas. So I'm just sort of scooping some in, some of this, these blobs in. I'm doing like this. Now this is basically almost done. All we have to do after this, very simply, is do the base. Yeah, now at the minute, you can sort of see what I'm going for. I'm breaking it up with the green. And when it dries, that, fingers crossed, should dry with a nice sort of swamp effect. He says. Let's just see how it goes. I'm confident. Yeah, which, considering it's me, I've seen a lot. Yeah. So now the only other thing that I need to do once we're done here is just base it up. Yeah, now for the basing... I'm actually going to change my normal tact. I'm going to use this stuff. Yeah, this is Gale Force 9's Hobby Round Marsh Blend. Okay. And I like it. Yeah, it is a ready blend, which I think will contrast well with the greens and that sort of stuff. Yeah, we can always hit it with a little bit of drab green thin wash if we need to knock it back and blend it in a little bit. Now, one of the reasons is I really like this color i think it'll be a nice contrast i think it goes well with our brown yeah so if i bring it up you can sort of see they do complement each other and then finally the other reason i kind of like this is that i got these for the book and i got a bulk supply so i've got about five or six of these hobby rounds which is enough for me to do pretty much an entire set yeah and keep it themed and in the future if i want to expand the set it's easy enough for me to get little portions just to expand it. Yes, using basing supplies for miniatures is not the best way of doing terrain, but if you've got them, makes sense. Right, so I'm going to whack some PVA down, put some of that down, put on some water of water down PVA on top of it. Yeah, but before that, yeah, I just want to do a little bit more work on this. So next time you see this, it should be done. We should be happy people. See you shortly, folks. Right, that's all done. It's dried and it's looking great. And yes, I do look a little bit different. It's a bit, we're having a bit of a cold spell here in the UK and the studios are freezing. So. I'm staying warm for this bit. Come on down. I think it turned out great. Check it out. Absolutely brilliant. Now, uh, being hypercritical of myself, yeah, I could have put a little bit more of the green on the very top of the skull. Just feels like it could do with just a little bit more. But that's me being picky. The, what do you call it? The lava, not the lava, the summing pool effects. Anything I think I'd like to do here is perhaps in the future some sort of light in there so there's no shadow yeah and it actually glows but yeah i like how it looks the ground as you can see 
it's come out it's come out a little bit patchy as you can see and this happens when what's it when your base layer of pva that you put you put down to sprinkle on is too watery yeah now i knew that would be the case and i'd get there was a good chance i'd get these sort of patches yeah but the thing is i kind of like them now i've added some, uh, some tufts on these are World War Scenics, and they're the Patchy 6 Mills. I need to grab a few more of these. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to dress the base up a little bit more, I think. Yeah. But I need to figure out what I'm doing with that. Yeah. With, with certain things, when you're doing things, you're trying to figure things out. If you can add to them later, then it's okay just to roll with it a little bit. Now, there was, with making this, there's a lot of learning curves and a lot of things that I'd like to do better. Which brings me to my next point. Introducing Bob and Sue and Yorick. Okay, I've got two more skulls. Now, a battle plan is, I said that I've really enjoyed doing this. There's been a lot of learning curves about working with materials and the effects and that sort of stuff that I can pull off. And I want to. And if I sit on it and say, oh, we'll do it in the future, it ain't going to get done. The smartest thing is, while I'm, I'm quite keen for this, and I've got a couple of spare skulls, to jump on this project right now while it's fresh in my mind, while I'm enjoying it, yeah? Really heighten it up and watch, let's see what else I can do with it. And at the same time, start to build perhaps a set. No commitments, just tell me what I'm doing next. Yeah, it's one step at a time. But that's the situation we're in, okay? Now, uh, I'm not just gonna do another video on some more, on exactly this. Next video, it's going to be what you I'm going to do different variations, do different porter techniques, stuff like that, show you some other stuff whilst enhancing the look. So, should be good stuff. So keep your eyes out for that. If you want a sneak peek of what's going on I, or have an input to the things I'm doing to it and you're part of the clan on Patreon, then jump on Patreon. I've started doing something different on Patreon now where I'm doing a weekly sort of like behind the scenes video but it's not just what's going on in the studio it's looking at your sort of builds on that you post to the community tab there's a community tab on patreon if you go there post what you're working on i get i review it on the video uh, the last community review we did for the chat Halla video that's what i'm starting to call them uh it was about 40 minutes long yeah as we went through builds and stuff plus there's a hot topic and that sort of stuff so every week there's like an hour long video yeah, sort of behind the scenes of all sorts of interesting stuff, and it's going to get there. So, if you are part of the clan, you want to see what I'm up with, Bob and Sue, yeah, should have called him again. Jump onto Patreon, yeah, go check the last video, jump in the comments, jump in the community tab. Yeah, I can't wait to catch you there, because I am heavily engaging there, just like I'm getting back on the channel. Yeah, I'm aiming for one good, really good terrain video a week on the channel at the minute, and we're rolling. So fingers up. Now, uh, that leads me to wrap up. You know what I'm doing. You've seen the photos. It's all good and we are rolling. Listen, if you're not part of the clan, then there will be links on screen. If you don't want to jump on that sort of stuff, but you'd like to support and help me get back in the studio. And it is appreciated and it is needed right now. I am still rebuilding things and it is a struggle. So it is appreciated and it is needed. There are links down below to either PayPal where you can send a one-off and just help keep me going or if you don't want to send cash via PayPal, there's the Amazon wish list where you can get, help me get awesome stuff for the studio. Like these awesome messages that Beetle got me. Thank you, buddy. And in the meantime, I've got some gantries to build with these. Good stuff coming. Right, I've had a brilliant time. Mojo restored. Cracking on with the chat alavid. Cracking on with the skulls. And I'll see you soon. There's the links. Yeah, all the best. I'm rambling. Ta.